Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? It's me, Mr. Four K Upscaler. So, what is HDR? What is high dynamic range? You know, sure, people talk about it, people see it, people use it, but what exactly is high dynamic range? Well, to, to truly understand the high dynamic range, we got to go back to the standard dynamic range and where the SDR came from. It's really a an enhancement. It started as a filter enhancement that enhances the uh, contrast ratio between your black digital levels and your white digital levels. And black digital levels and white digital levels, they play a huge role because they give a dynamic, almost like a depth of picture in a distance. Okay, if you're black digital levels and your white digital levels are not in a nice ratio between each other uh, then you're not gonna have that dynamic picture quality okay so in other words what happens what happens with the uh, dynamic range is the range between your black digital levels and your white digital levels has to have a certain ratio and that ratio is the contrast. The contrast between your black digital levels and white digital levels gives you a nice depth of three-dimensional picture quality. Now, with high dynamic range, we're stepping into a 10-bit color, 10-bit per pixel, giving us, obviously, a better color palette, which in this case is the color gamut that's used on every 10-bit television. The color gamut can be measured by DCI-P3 uh, measurement depending on what type of panel do you have and what type of color spectrum can your panel uh, bring, obviously. But the color gamut and uh, peak brightness with 10-bit panels it's what makes the uh, dynamic range a high dynamic range instead of standard dynamic range. Standard dynamic range was called standard because they were using the sRGB 8-bit panels and SDR did what it did back then with the DVDs and the Blu-rays as much as it could. However, with high dynamic range not only are you getting obviously a 10 bit per pixel 10 bit color panel but at the same time you're getting the color gamut and a much higher contrast ratio on top of that peak brightness that these panels can utilize with higher resolution when you put higher resolution then you're getting a much better detail when you implement higher resolution with color gamut with a better contrast ratio between black digital levels and white digital levels then you're getting a more natural picture quality and that's what you're seeing here now imagine the 8k 33 million pixels with high dynamic range and then you can just let your mind like just let your mind try to capture that 33 million pixels Imagine that detail with high dynamic range. Yeah. So high dynamic range, it's really a, I don't want to call it filter, but it is a filter. It is really a filter that enhances the picture. It's what it does. It's, it enhances the picture to give you a more natural picture. So like you're looking right now in my Samsung Q8FN, you are seeing a more natural picture okay and that's what you want to have on your television you know granted the resolution plays a huge role color gamut plays a huge role peak brightness plays a huge role and of course the contrast ratio of your television and what it can do plays a huge role okay so every in each element it's important in order for you to to achieve the best possible picture quality Okay, so I don't know, I just wanted to kind of touch on this a little bit because uh, I don't know how many of you like studied high dynamic range, how many of you actually 
learn about high dynamic range and how all that works okay and uh, you can learn all about that on Google you can go through it but it's not so much about uh, learning it it's about understanding it you know you know a lot of people memorize stuff but they don't understand the substance and the reasoning behind it you know the substance of HDR it's there to bring more natural picture quality okay but you need to understand why it's there what what it's its purpose there's still people out there who don't believe that they, there's any difference between high dynamic range and standard dynamic range that's because they don't understand the substance of high dynamic range which I just mentioned contrast ratio between your black digital levels white digital levels white digital levels you can call them paper white okay black digital levels you can call them brightness okay and then you got the peak brightness which enhances the contrast even higher bringing that ratio even more vivid and then you got color gamut which introduces a spectrum of colors wider spectrum of colors so you can see all of this in a better detail all right along with a 10 bit per pixel and on top of that you got high resolution you know 8.3 million pixels 4k and then you got 8k 33 million pixels you know. but there is a huge difference there is a dramatic difference between what you normally see on your you know standard 1080p television versus what you will see on 4k television but remember guys this is the important part it really depends on your TV panel you know the reason I do all these videos and the reason I talk about all of this it's to tell you that you can't buy like a Kmart or Walmart $350 $400 television and then expect to have something like this okay that's what I'm trying to come across here to, you know if you truly want to utilize HDR if you truly want to enjoy 4k UHD blu-ray movies with HDR and Dolby Vision you have to have a television that can give you all of those ingredients okay you gotta have the proper ingredients for you to appreciate it Samsung Q8FN this is what I'm looking at looking at right now this is Samsung Q8FN it's going to give you excellent 4K HDR picture quality. The OLED, which is on my other side, will also give you an excellent picture quality. Because all of these televisions, all of these high-end televisions, they have the ingredients necessary for you to appreciate that. Okay? And um, that's the important part that I think... Uh, many out there don't seem to understand you know I would never purchase uh, a 4k HDR television if I wasn't able to get something that it's within the standards of what it requires for HDR to work you know what is the point of you getting a, a low-end television that only can go up to 600 nits has a poor color gamut the CIP 3 measurement and then on top of that it has like a poor full full local dimming with like I don't know like maybe 28 30 local dimming zones you have to have a proper television to enjoy this type of quality so anyway I just wanted to briefly touch on this uh, and uh, remember if you want to enjoy 4k HDR you have to have a proper television to enjoy that my recommendation it's always been anything that has a pretty good color measurement a good local dimming 900 peak nits of brightness or above any any television that has that with a vertical alignment panel any television that has that in my opinion you're definitely going to enjoy what the HDR can offer, okay?
But if you want my two recommendations, I would say Samsung Q, Q8, Q9, 2018, 2019, and then the OLED 2018 or 2019 versions. You can't go wrong with a QLED or OLED. These two television, these two brands of Samsung and, and LG, QLED and OLED, you're not going to go wrong with either one of those two televisions that you choose to go with. You're going to appreciate this type of quality. Okay? So anyway, I just wanted to touch on that a little bit. And um, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget on Friday, on Friday I'm doing a Call of Duty Modern Warfare campaign with real-time ray tracing and 4K HDR. It'll be split in many different parts, part one, part two, part three, probably eight parts, 25 minutes each video will be about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay? Thank you for watching.